Hey family, how is everybody doing? It's Tabanyi of God's Hara Mission. I am back. Remember I told you that the Lord would bring me back as and when he sees fit. And I think that day has arrived. How is everybody doing? I trust that you are well on this new month. Uh, today is my birthday. I'm turning 40. Girlfriend is turning 40. Thank you Lord Jesus. I'm so grateful for that which the God of glory has done in my life. How he has carried me through it all. The hardships, difficulties um challenges you know the, the the good the bad and the ugly so to god be the glory i give it all to him and i owe it all to him so thank you lord jesus for yet another year and the years that are to come so yeah i don't take any glory from it i know i would not be standing here and not being for the grace of god and of course his loving kindness and his faithfulness so welcome everybody to God's Hara Mission. My name is Tavan Sahaichu. If it is your first time, welcome. Um, we are here and about the business of the Father. I don't know why does it say that my network is slow, but I hope that you guys can hear me clearly and that the connection is good. Um, yeah, so I thought I was going to be chilling today because I'm spending my birthday indoors. I'm just spending time with God. I am going nowhere. don't want to do anything. That's why I cleaned. Over the weekend, because I don't, I'm not interested. I'm just going to sit with the Lord and just reflect, you know, and just have a quiet, quiet time with the Lord, you know, on my birthday. That's how I'm spending it. I am staying in Texas in the USA. So, yeah, good chunk of my family and friends are at home in South Africa. Um, so, yeah. All right. So, I thought I would be off today, like I said earlier on, but God decided otherwise. So, I'm going to be obedient and share the word of God that he has um, impressed upon my heart and I'm going to pray first and then jump on the word so Heavenly Father thank you thank you for this day it is the day you've made we're going to rejoice and be glad in it help me deliver this word Holy Spirit with accuracy and with conviction I pray a blessing over my brothers and sisters I pray the blood of Jesus over them whomever it is that's going to receive from this word Heavenly Father I ask that you minister to their hearts may this word take root in our spirit clear our mind and our thoughts, Heavenly Father, give us your peace, which surpasses all understanding. I plead the blood of Jesus over this broadcast. And I thank you for that which you are doing in this season. I thank you for the word. I thank you, Lord, when you continue to speak to your people from a place of wanting them to be comforted, strengthened, and encouraged in the Lord. And for you, giving us your wisdom, Heavenly Father, it's such a precious gift. And help us to yield unto instructions by your Spirit. To remain obedient at all times as you humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. So, fam, here goes nothing. <laughs> I want to read the word that the Lord gave me. Um, comes from the book of Matthew. Uh, Matthew verse 21 from 33 through through 46. Okay, so that's where I'm going to read from. And then we'll take it from there. On my NLT, I'm reading my NLT today. It, uh, my heading on this is Parable of the Even Tenant Farmer. So I'm going to read the word and then I'm going to expound on what the Lord highlighted or he tagged in my spirit. Okay, so here we go. Now listen to another story. A certain landowner planted a vineyard, built a wall around it, dug a pit for pressing out the grape juice and built a lookout tower. Then he leased the vineyard to tenant farmers and moved to another country. In the time of the grape harvest, he, at the time of the grape harvest, he sent his servants to collect his share of the crop. But the farmers grabbed his servants, beat one, killed one, and stoned another. So the landowner sent a larger group of his servants to collect for him, but the results were the same. Finally, the owner sent his son, thinking, surely they will respect my son. But when the tenant farmers saw his son coming, they said to one another, Here comes the heir to, the, to this estate. Come on, let's kill him and get the estate for ourselves. So they grabbed him, dragged him out of the vineyard, and murdered him. When the owner of the vineyard returns, Jesus asked, What do you think you will do to the farmers? The religious leaders replied, He will put the wicked men to a horrible death and leave the vineyards to others who will give him his share of the crop after each harvest. Then Jesus asked them, didn't you ever read in the scriptures the stone that builders rejected 
has now become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing and it is wonderful to see. I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a nation that will produce the proper fruit. Anyone who stumbles over that stone will be broken to pieces and it will crush anyone it falls on. When the leading priests and Pharisees heard this parable, they realized he was telling the story against them. They were the wicked farmers. They wanted to arrest him, but they were afraid of the crowds who considered Jesus to be a prophet. Okay, I had to make him note their fans. <laughs> so um, we understand from the passage of scripture that I just read, certain things are just really, really obvious, which is the six main characters that the parable speaks about. It speaks about the landowner, we know that is God. It speaks about the vineyard, which is the nation of Israel or God's people or God's person. The tenants, which are the you know evil uh, farmers, which is the Jewish religious um, leaders. And then it speaks about the landowner's servants, who are the prophets. These are the prophets. Um, who remain obedient and preach God's word to the people of Israel. And he speaks about the son, that's the fifth character, who is Jesus, and then the other tenants who are the Gentiles. All right. So that is really the biblical interpretation of what I'm about to speak um, in the context which this passage of scripture is, 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 is um, relayed or is being communicated. But what the Lord also highlighted to me is that in this season, He's in the business of removing a lot of people from their office. Okay. Remember when in this passage of scripture, when he leased uh, his vineyard to these tenants, he gave them um, a role to play, um, a responsibility to undertake. He gave them an assignment. He gave them purpose, you know, I mean, he entrusted them with his vineyard to steward well what he had entrusted. Similarly, when you've got a job or you're put in a position of power or authority, um, you have been given, you know, um, responsibilities that you have to carry out. So these wicked tenant farmers, they are referenced to as wicked because obviously God knows the heart of men. They had evil in their heart. And we see that where God has sent through his servants or the landowner sent back his servants to uh, take off a share of his crop where they would chase them away. They murdered one, they stoned another, and they beat up another. So that exposed really the wickedness that they carried in their heart. So in this season, God is saying that he's removing a lot of wicked people that he had placed in position of power who went about with their wickedness and didn't do what the Lord had intended for them to do. He's taking them out of office is removing them from a position of power and authority and he's going to hand over that position of power and authority to somebody else or another organization or another business so that is what the god of glory ministered to my heart um when you speak about vineyard in the old testament it normally speaks to wealth status and power it also speaks to, or it's a symbol of God's people, or God's nation, or Israel. All right. So God is busy doing a lot of replacements, as he always does. It's consistent with who God is. He will replace you if you don't do what he's assigned you to do. He'll find somebody else who is willing, who is available, but above all things, who is obedient to what he wants done. Had they just given the share of the crop that the God of glory has sent his servants to go and accomplish or uh, go and pick and bring back to him, they wouldn't have actually suffered uh, their, their outcome, which was, according to the Bible, they were put to death, they were killed. And when the Lord impressed the part where it says that, where Christ asked them, what do you think, you know, the landowner would do to these farmers, these wicked farmers, these wicked tenant farmers, they replied that he would put the wicked man to a horrible death and leave the vineyard to others who would give him his share of the crop after each harvest. It's, it's not only speaking about killing them, it's physically killing them, he's also speaking about killing them in the sense of removing them from those positions, killing their roles, killing those positions, or and taking them away 
from that place of authority and power and he's going to hand it over to somebody else. Resources are going to be shifted over for those who will steward them well. Um, the means and, the, and the, the ability, you know, to be able to carry forth God's mission is going to be handed over in real time to those who are willing, those who are obedient. And in this context, similarly to how the Lord explained it to me, the servants are those who have been sent by God. It's, it's somebody, whether they are a prophet or not, who is being assigned this particular task by God on behalf of God. And is being asked to step in a certain role to do a certain something for God. So those are the ones whom this wicked people kicked out. But then the God of glory goes in to say that he is going to remove the wicked leaders, the wicked managers, wicked business owners, wicked this and wicked that. And in their place, you know, he will put people who are um, quick to obey his word and who are faithful and who don't have wickedness in them. Um, because he, these ones, as the Pharisees would do, presented some level of godliness, but they didn't want to, they denied its power. You know, they preached God is God, but their hearts were far from him. And you can't deceive God. God sees our heart and is able to judge us righteous, right, rightly because he is the righteous judge. Um, and also further on, there's a part of it that speaks about Christ Jesus, who was rejected by the Pharisees, but is the capstone of the actual building, right? The capstone of the church. He is the high priest. He was eventually killed because he's the heir to the kingdom of God, and we are co heirs with him if you are in Christ and born again to the kingdom of God. So don't be surprised when you are a servant, because when you're a prophet, you serve under, under Christ's lordship. You are his servant, essentially, right? When you're his disciple, apostle, whatever your office is, even if you're not on the pulpit, there are prophets moving around, around us who are bankers, who are accountants, who are pilots, who are teachers. You know, it doesn't matter what career path you choose. When God chooses to use you, he will use you. It doesn't mean you have to be behind the screen like me or in a pulpit somewhere. He chooses to use you. So when Christ sent, sent those servants um, to go and, you know, pick, from, pick a portion or his share of the crop, he was singing them and he got rejected. They got rejected just as Christ would then be rejected. So when you are assigned a task or you're in a particular position and God has sent you to do that for him and you get rejected, understand that one who sent you has been rejected too. And it's not you that they are rejecting, but the one who has sent you at the end of the day. So them rejecting the servants of God who are the prophets or those assigned to do his bidding, you they also rejected Christ Jesus, who is the co-heir of the kingdom of God, essentially God himself. Not only they reject the servants and Christ Jesus, but they also rejected the Father because Christ was sent by the Father. The land owner being God sent Christ to the vineyard because the servants were being killed, rejected, persecuted, and, and beaten and stoned. And when they sent him, then they also, we know that, you know, right, he was crucified and, and put on Calvary. So when you're experiencing that, understand that it's because of the one whom you carry. But here's the beauty about it all. God is about to remove those he put in a place of authority and power and with, with those resources. He's taking the resources away and putting somebody else in their place to carry forth his mission. As he clearly says there, that uh, he will put the wicked men to a horrible death and leave the vineyard to others who will give him his share of the crop after each harvest. And then Christ further goes on to say that I tell you the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a nation that will produce the proper fruit, proper fruit, fruit of the Holy Spirit. Anyone who stumbles over that stone, which is the capstone, Christ Jesus, will be broken. Either coming to salvation, having a broken and contrite spirit, being humbled and surrendering all and giving their life to Christ, or that stone will crush anyone it falls on. Or they will perish okay so that's it either you go with Christ or you're gonna perish so that's pretty much the word fam that I wanted to share so understand don't be surprised when a lot of things start to change people being removed from offices people being kicked out of their position of power being replaced with the speed of light that is because the Lord of the vineyard or, or yeah the Lord of the vineyard the God of glory 
is about to take that away from them and giving it to those who will be obedient to his leading, who will be obedient to his word, who will be faithful and be diligent with what he will entrust them with so that they are able to produce the proper fruit, which is that of the Holy Spirit. So with that, fam, thank you so much for the well wishes, family. I really do appreciate it. Birthday well wishes. I'm going to go back and spend some time with the Lord and see what else he has to say. I never thought I would have to be teaching on my 40th birthday, but here we are. But thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm standing because in you, I move, I live, and I have my being in the mighty name of Jesus. Remain blessed, family. And again, I just want to wish you all a happy, happy and blessed Rosh Hashanah, which is happening tomorrow on the first, sorry, on the second of October, um, throughout the fourth of October. So that is the, the new, the new Jewish year, according to the Jewish calendar, biblical calendar, not the Gregorian that we follow. So it is literally the new year that we're stepping into tomorrow, second of October, Rosh Hashanah. So may the God of glory bless you. May he keep you. May he turn his face toward you. May he be gracious unto you, you and your household now and forevermore. In the mighty name of Jesus, as and when the Spirit of God leads, I will be back. But for now, remain blessed and see you soon. Love you.